I'd like to bring out uh, Jennifer Dominichini from, um, from Sears. She's the CMO of um, Outdoor and Seasonal, is that correct? That's correct. Um, Jennifer and I have gotten to know each other. I knew a few people long term at Sears, but Collective Bias, where I'm the Chief Social Marketing Officer, we've been doing a lot of initiatives with them. We've really gotten to know her well, and we really love the outlook and what they're trying to do with a legacy brand at Kmart and Sears. Um, next is Morgan Johnson. Uh, Morgan is the head of communications, manager of communications for JetBlue. Uh, there's a nice story about how Morgan and I met each other. I've told it before here, but it might be a different audience. I was on one of those flights on the way to South By that was sitting on the runway for a couple hours. I did not know who Morgan was. I whipped out my laptop. I started tweeting at JetBlue, what's the deal? What's going on? And they totally engaged me. I'm the first guy in the plane that knew why we were stuck on the runway. Uh, they're having a conversation with me. And then I started playing with them a little bit. And I started saying, well, as long as we're here and we're missing our parties in, in South By, how about free drinks? And of course, at first they quoted me FDA regulations, but then I didn't give up. So they started having some fun with me, and eventually they said, how about free movies? And, and, and everybody in the plane got a free movie. This was before, I think, the escalation policy was put in place or something like that. Sure, you know, and, and two months later, Morgan and I are on a panel together at the CMO conference. We had never met. I met him two minutes before the panel. We're sitting on the panel. We're talking about the, how difficult I'm at Elf at the time, cosmetics company, and how easy it is to build social and its aspirational brand, and the difficulties a brand like JetBlue or Citibank has, where they don't really get anything but complaints. And I used the same word when I landed, by the way, in South By. I tweeted out, kudos to at JetBlue. They couldn't fix my problem, but they engaged me. So when he starts talking about how they treat their customers, I said kudos to him because of the way you do this. And he just starts looking at me. He says, oh my god, you're the guy. You're at Ted Rubin. You're the free drinks guy. And, and of course, to my amazement, I'm like, and I was actually tweeting with the guy who runs the whole department. So just a little story about how JetBlue really does it right. Oh, somebody left me some bracelets. So what, what we're here to talk about is I'm, I'm Ted Rubin, at Ted Rubin on Twitter. Um, I coined the term return on relationship, ROR. I talk about it a lot. I hashtag it with R-O-N-R. -R, um, and I try to encourage brands that it's much more about, not about the campaigns and the initiatives, but that the, the real power of social is about building relationships. Uh, recently, I've taken it to the next extent, and I've been talking about taking the word friend back. You know, the way Facebook has devalued the word friend, and people start thinking now that it's just about clicking on a button or, or, or just basically finding someone, saying you're their friend, and then moving on to the next thing. So I talk a lot about interaction and engagement. And what I want to talk about here was how companies like JetBlue and Sears Kmart are really interacting and engaging with their customers rather than just using social as another tool in the marketing toolbox. So, you know, why don't we start off with, with Jennifer, maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of the things that you guys are doing and, and how you're trying to build that connection and not just do one-off campaigns. Okay, terrific. So, um, hi everyone. Um, I am the CMO of a division that is the seasonal and outdoor living business for both Kmart and Sears and as I like to joke, it's all seasons all the time. We sell very fun things, everything from Halloween costumes to grills to patio sets to Christmas trees to Easter baskets and everything in between. So you really can't go wrong with the kind of products that, that we sell because you know these are the products that engage whole families, right? All the generations, all the kids, every season. But one thing that's really important to remember about Kmart and Sears is we've always been about community. I don't know how many of you remember the days when you might have been sitting around the coffee table looking at the Sears wish book or looking at that catalog thinking about what am I going to get this holiday season? What am I going to give mom and dad or my brother and sister. I don't know how many of you by show of hands, does anybody remember those days? Any nostalgia? Well, good, I'm, I'm glad. And, and Kmart the same way, very much a community-based retailer. And so what we're trying to do is, as Ted mentioned, yes, we run big campaigns, we run TV campaigns, radio campaigns, big branding campaigns. You might have seen some of the new a real campaign that's on TV for the Sears brand, but really what we're trying to do is go back to our roots of community and engage with consumers in a very authentic ways. Um, I can talk more specifically about what we're doing, but one of our strategic objectives in my division is to build relevance and consideration all year long. It's not enough to say, you know, thank you very much, you're a Halloween shopper, I'm going to talk to you from you know, September 1st until November 1st and then never talk to you again. That's just not good enough. So what we're trying to do is use all ways, including social, and our loyalty program, which is called Shop Your Way Rewards, to engage with our consumers and reward them for engaging with us in a very authentic way. 
Um, thanks, Jennifer. Uh, now, Morgan is with a company we all know, JetBlue, um, in an industry that, you know, very rarely do you get those, you know, wow, what a great experience. Thanks so much for being so wonderful. And, and, and a lot of us have heard earlier today about how people have to, whoever has the loudest voice is how you're getting the attention of brands and, you know, yell and scream and a brand will give you what you want. Well, here's a guy who really can't, the, the plane's not taken off the runway because you're tweeting every three seconds how angry you are, no matter how many retweets you get. So, you know, Morgan, why don't you talk to us a little bit, a little bit about the approach you take on how you interact and engage and how you build value like that for the brand. Sure. Well, I think to, to Jennifer's point, um, anyone seen that JetBlue commercial on TV the other day? Probably not, because we don't have them. <laughs> um, unless you live in Boston, you're not really going to see a whole lot of our advertising on television. Um, so we've always been a company that relied on word of mouth. Um, so social for us is always just an extenuation, uh, an extension of that word of mouth that we've always thrived on. Um, I think in terms of how are we looking at what we're hearing from our customers. Um, because we know that our customers travel in packs, generally 100 to 150 at a time, um, we understand that if there's one person talking about an issue, they're not alone. There's more people going on. There's more things happening than just that one person's concern. Um, and so for us, that engagement is so much more useful because it is the canary in the coal mines, the litmus test for how our operations are doing overall. And if we hear a customer talking to us about a situation happening at one of our cities, um, whether it's they need more information or, you know, what's the status of this flight, um, hey, how's the weather in my destination, if they're asking that question, there's potential there's 149 other people who are asking that same question. So for us, it's the idea of using this as a listening booth, as a way of, of yes, we're going to continue to have those conversations. We still want to make sure that we, we have those individual connections with customers. But how are we also active listening and taking what we hear back to the operations to say, hey, heads up, Chicago, you've got some folks who are looking for some more information about their flight status. You, you um, know, I'm really glad you said this, Morgan, because one of them, I think you're probably, I interact with just about every airline. Uh, via Twitter. And, and I think you're the only one that doesn't pull the conversations t offline. Uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, what I find is most of them, I don't know about the experiences we've had here in the audience, but you know, you say you're having a complaint with Delta, first they do direct you to Delta Assist, then they ask you to follow them so they can DM you, and then they give you an email address and tell you to email them. I mean, and Virgin America is supposed to be this great social company, and I have to tell you, Porter Gale recently left, but they did an amazing job with campaign and initiative, but you, you tweet them, you, you can be hours before you hear back from them, and I can vouch for the fact that when you tweet JetBlue, uh, you hear back from them quickly, and it's not just me because I've haunted them for so long. I, I see it with people sitting next to me on the plane, and with, with Virgin, they'll not only take you offline, but then they'll give you an email address, and then 28 hours later, and I'm speaking from experience, we don't have time here to go in the whole story, maybe you'll hear from them and they'll say to you, well, here's a go-go internet certificate to solve your problem, you know, for $12.95. Not recognizing that really what you want it to be, and I think most of you understand this, is we want it to be heard. And that's what I think JetBlue is doing great. And then they're using the platform perfect example that there's another 150 people with the same problem and if you solve it for one publicly you're, you're solving it for the rest. Yeah, We think it's a great opportunity for us to make sure that as we listen to these things we can solve the problem before it actually turns into a recovery after the fact. Right. So the experience for everyone else involved is so seamless that it is um, we, saw, we saw there was a hiccup, we saw there was a seamless recovery I'm going to leave this experience thinking that JetBlue is a wonderful airline and I want to fly with them again, so, which is are always going to be our goal. There's, there's, you lose the ability to have a victory if you're recovering them 20 right. hour, hours later. And, and now you take a company like Sears, which has a, a very different one, one challenge. Sears and Kmart, legacy brand, lots of great memories, trying to bring it into something that's relevant today to the consumer. And then beyond that, you've got all this amazing content that you get because of what you've been doing in the Craftsman brand and all these other things. How do, you, how do you leverage that and then, again, take it to the next step so it's not just about, well, here's our great stuff, come and buy it, but building an emotional connection with the consumer? Great. So, yeah, so content, as, as you were saying, is really important for us. But it's not only content that we push out, it's content that we pull in. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we, we invite our, our consumers, our, our brand ambassadors, uh, experts, for example, in our fitness business, we've partnered with a whole group we call our advisory board. So they're experts in their field, leading dietitianists, people who are best-selling authors, fitness trainers from all kinds of fitness disciplines. And we've partnered with them because we believe while we can create some content internally, and certainly our vendors help us do a lot of that about product, we need to be creating content that's relevant from a broader lifestyle perspective. And we like to partner with the best and the best, whether those are consumers and enthusiasts or people who are experts in their field. But content isn't, isn't, isn't the only thing we need, right? We can put up good content in our webs, bring good content you know, to our store, et cetera, to mobile devices and the like. But really what we need is one of my peers talks about content just gives you the excuse to have a conversation. And what we really need is to be able to use the content almost as a springboard to start conversations and then have the, and be okay, be okay with those conversations going in directions where maybe we didn't think about. So go ahead. So you'd say like what I like to say is that you know people say content is king and, and I believe that's true for media businesses because that's what they're about. What I like to say is content opens the door but engagement is really the king. And sometimes if you see me tweet it, I'll say engagement is queen because I don't think many men engage in that way. And it's mostly a, a venue the, the way women share. And, and it's one of the reasons um, brands market so heavily to women. There's a big uh, con uh, discussion going on now. Are all the old numbers correct that have been published? 85% of sales being really decided by women in the household. And there's a whole talk that maybe men are making more of those decisions. But my contention is regardless of who's making that, those decisions, it's the women that are sharing it and, and that are talking about it more. So I'm sure that you're going in a lot, lot in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, next question I'd like to ask you is that I was just at Blog World Expo. I know a lot of people here were there as well. And my biggest takeaway from Blog World was that too many people are worrying about what's next and, and what's happening later instead of in social, instead of what's happening right now and, and, and executing. And, and, and I'd say 90% of the conversations there are about where everything's going. I'm more concerned about where it is right now and, and execution. So maybe both of you could tell me, you know, let's say for JetBlue right now, what's the most important thing right now that you feel needs to be executed to take what you've been doing with building these relationships and number one, maintaining it, and number two, growing on it? Um, well, I think... I got you. I told you I wasn't going to tell you in advance yeah, no. what we were asking. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that I think is important to us as a, as a culture, as a social media platform altogether, is this idea that at this point, yeah, we know there's going to be things on the horizon, and, and fine. And we have the 100 level course of what social media is supposed to be. I think the conversation that we need to have now is really what's, what's, what's the 200 level course for what we're currently doing? How do we step up our game overall? Whether that's, you know. How do you how, scale it, in other words? How do you scale it, and how do you behave as a responsible citizen of social media? How are you making sure that you are doing not what is easy, but what is right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's. That's one of the Great things that point. we're trying really hard to work on for our own policies, making sure that we are um, taking those information and not treating symptoms, but treating problems. Mm -hmm. um, and, or, or, or reaching out and inspiring conversation rather than trying to play um, conversation with 1.6 million people, which is kind of difficult. But how do we help inspire a conversation that we can take part in but also give control of that conversation to the audience itself. Jennifer, same? Uh... Well, we have this little thing called Black Friday that's coming up in a few weeks, so we're, <laughs> we're focused on that. Um, really for us is, you know, we need to, this holiday season in both formats, we need to win. But we need to do is we need to, you know, translate what we're saying at the big brand level. You'll see it on TV, you'll see it in our ads, you'll see it in the newspapers. And if we're, you know, talking about real joy guaranteed, where we need to make sure across all of the Sears touch points that that real joy this holiday season is being guaranteed. So it's managing the balance between continuing the conversation and the engagement, but then also using social media and all of our marketing assets to help conversion, right? We want to sell things, right? We want to bring people in store. We want to bring them back during holiday season, but we don't want to be inauthentic when we're doing that as well. It shouldn't be all about the sale. So we're doing a lot this holiday season, and I hope you'll see the difference, which is that balance of community building and engagement, but then also, you know, hardcore selling, which is what, you know, this, this is the time of year for us where we really got to get it right. So as they say in retail, retail's detail. 
you were, were pretty focused. And it's a business, right? I mean, it's about making money because if you're not, you're not going to be here to do anything down the road and those relationships won't mean anything. Um, we were really wanted to make sure we left some time here for the audience or anybody that might have questions. Um, you, you got an opportunity here. You have Morgan Johnson from JetBlue, Jennifer Dominicini from, um, from Sears. Anybody have a question they'd like to pose? It's good because this is kind of what we've been discussing before. Yeah. Also, if you could repeat his question just so. So the question is, you know, how, how do we handle crises? Um, how do we handle brand damage? Um, I kind of like that to say it. I'm going to have to continue using that. Um, I think for us, um, part of one of the things that we have tried to cultivate, um, and, and I think you're probably referring to uh, last week's event uh, in Bra at Bradley, uh, where we had some planes in the ground for an extended period of time. Uh, breaking uh, um, um, some some time constraints there. Um, transparently, so here's here's one of the issues. Um, we want to be respectful of an investigation that's occurring. So we can't really share a whole lot of details about the sorts of things. We also don't necessarily have the specific specific verified information that's been verified by all parties that we that we can comfortably share. So we're waiting for this DOT investigation. The difficulty of that is there are things that our customers want to know. Um, and and they're, they're, they, they're coming to us because we've always been very transparent about information that we can share. Um, and we've always wanted to be that transparent. Uh, one of the things that we've developed over the last five years of playing with social media is a layer of trust with our customers. Um, that we, so they, they know that we, we strive to be transparent as often as possible. So when these crises do occur, and we have to say, this is stuff that we can't really share a whole lot of details on right now. But we encourage you to follow the process. We encourage you to pay attention to the, uh, the investigations that are occurring. Um, and it's a little bit difficult, but the collaborative nature of the relationship that you have with an individual customers helps you establish a layer of trust yeah. that says, you know what? I understand that you want to tell us something, but you can't. Um, and I respect that. Let me, let me jump in a second. We, we, we were actually just discussing this uh, before we came down here, and the same thing holds for Sears and, and, and Kmart in that the real discussion here is that very often you hear what's the ROI on social, or what's the ROI on building these relationships, and I talk a lot about return on relationship. Well, this is a perfect example of return on relationship. If you want to go out and build those, those relationships after the crisis happens, you're not going to be able to do it. The value, the return, a major turn comes in is that you've got a credibility with your customers. So back when JetBlue had their issues a few years ago, they didn't have the extent of this relationship with their customers, this social interaction, this layer of trust, that now they do get the benefit of the doubt to say, you know, we're really not sure what the answer to that is yet. Um, we need a little time to investigate. The DOT is looking at this. We can't speak about th certain things. And if you notice, this thing didn't become a firestorm. And I have to say, in my humble opinion, and one of the reasons it didn't is because of all the work that JetBlue's put in to build that social relationship, to build those relationships with their customers, and, and to build that trust. You know, just remember, you know, awareness, it, it, it builds relationships, it builds loyalty, and loyalty is what's going to hit your bottom line. And, and really, the other thing about that is also this trust that we built and this engagement we built with all these customers who have flown with us for the last five years, uh, you know, 10 years, uh, without an incident, um, without any of these issues. We've established a relationship, we've established a dialogue with them, and it's, it's, it was very gratifying for us to see the number of customers who stepped forward to talk to these folks um, on our behalf. We understand JetBlue can't really say a whole lot about this because there's investigations happening and they want to make sure they're giving confirmed information. But I can tell you about my experience with JetBlue. And you'll be and amazed how at how this match. happens with, with all brands. I know, I know Sears has seen it and Kmart has seen it in uh, certain circumstances where you know, people talk about, well, what about the haters that come onto our Facebook page and write horrible things? And isn't it okay if we delete those things? Well, my answer is no. Number one, it's not, I don't think, unless, of course, there's language that you can't have in there. You know, don't turn around like, like some of the brands out there and blame it on Facebook like Chapstick did or, or 
or, or something like that, but accept it. And then what's going to happen is if you have those relationships, your audience, your customers, your friends will jump in and defend you. And there's nothing better and more authentic than those are the people who are saying, hey, JetBlue's been really good to me. They're not saying, hey, we've been really good to you. Uh, and it, I think there was one more question. I think we're almost out of time. Um, Well, you know, Jennifer, maybe you can hit this. What, what I like to say is, when, when, especially when I work with a brand, is I, I, I love critics. I search for critics because there's no better advocate than a former critic. And, and, and also, the learning I get from them for a brand is tremendous. So, yeah, Jennifer. I would just, you know, say the same thing. I mean, there are times when it doesn't help us a lot, but most times there's something in that criticism that really gives us a key insight. Quick example where someone was complaining a lot about the ability to buy online and pick up in our, sto in our, in the, in our stores and was really, really frustrated about how it never worked. But peeling back the onion, we realized that we were having some technical glitches on what SKUs were actually being able to be ordered online and picked up in the store. And because of that criticism, which we got several more criticisms as a result of the first criticism, we were able to solve the problem for the better of the company and for the better of the customer and then reached out to that person directly and really expressed our gratitude, even though the original expression of that was wasn't really an insight, it was a criticism, but it was really very helpful criticism. Well, I want to thank you guys. I think we're out of time. I want to thank Morgan and Jennifer. Marissa, we wish you could have been here with us. Uh, we, we, we felt you on our hearts. And everybody, what I'd like to just say is let's remember that it's all about relationships. And let's make 2012 the year of taking the word friend back. Thank you.